What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2025 Kia Soul, courtesy of Fred Beans Kia in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are this one today because first off, this thing has very nice, unique styling. There's no mistaking this for a Soul without a doubt, which I absolutely love. There actually is a new special edition trim level for 2025 as well. You also get America's best warranty being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. You can't beat that. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2025 soul you got the lx starting at twenty thousand two hundred ninety dollars s for twenty two thousand seven ninety gt line for twenty three eight ninety ex which is the one we are in today starting at twenty four thousand five hundred ninety dollars and lastly the ex soulmate special edition that's a pretty cool name starting at twenty five thousand five hundred and ninety dollars but regardless of the trim level that you go with the power plant on the soul is going to be the same power the Little Beast is a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 147 horsepower at 6,200 RPM, 132 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,500 RPM. That power being sent to the front wheels through an IVT, which is Kia's version of a CVT. It stands for Intelligent Variable Transmission. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately eight seconds flat. Top speed, if you're interested, 120 miles per hour. With MPG numbers coming in at 27 in the city, 33 on the highway for for all trim levels but the EX for whatever reason. The EX trim level is gonna come in at 29 in the city, 35 on the highway. So the best MPGs can be had with the trim level that we have today. But by the way, taking regular unleaded fuel, of course. But before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the Soul, I did wanna to mention to you guys the driving mode. So there's a little drive mode button located just to the left of the shifter that will give you the choice between sport and normal. So that's gonna adjust things like the shift point the throttle response and the air conditioning system as well so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the soul here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2025 kia soul here up the speed all right found us straight away in three two one go nice nice initial pep that's not bad that's, that's not bad, guys. For as small as this vehicle is, that's really not that bad of an acceleration. And I love the initial pep on the gas there because everything's turbocharged these days. So I feel like a lot of stuff has that turbo lag at the very beginning, whereas this one being a naturally aspirated four-cylinder is just like, okay, let's go. So big fit of the acceleration there, believe it or not. I can see this for, you know, zooming around city streets. This is gonna be wonderful. But even just for an acceleration test like I just did, that's great. And I had it in sport driving mode, I'll have you know as well. So nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 11 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10.3 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 116 feet, which quite honestly is a sports sedan number. That is plenty impressive on paper. So let's go ahead and test out the braking feel here. It's great, I love it. So it's, it's not a super firm braking feel, but it's not a soft braking feel either. It's just right for what the Kia Soul is. I'll put it that way. And like I said, 116 feet, that's a very, very impressive braking number, quite honestly. So you're not gonna have any issues coming to a stop in this thing. But then touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, coupled torsen beam rear axle. Of course, gas pressurized shock absorbers as well. As far as ride quality goes, I will say this, one of the first things I noticed, you do tend to feel a little bit more of the road in the sole because it is a smaller vehicle. So expect that. For most people, it's not gonna be an issue. Um, but just keep that in mind. It rides kind of like a compact car. I'll just put it that way. As far as steering feel goes, it's actually really fun. I don't mind it. So it's a little bit on the heavier side of things. Not a super heavy steering feel though. It's definitely not a loose steering feel either. It's kind of playful. I think that's the best word I can use to describe the steering feel in the Kia Soul. It's, it's very playful, which is a good thing, especially because I'm coming up on some back roads here. But as far as cabin noise goes, this is probably the perfect test. We're going 39 miles per hour here. There's a little bit of road noise, but it's not something that would personally bother me. So no issues there for me. 
touching our rear visibility because of the shape of the sole i think you guys know the answer to this it is 100 percent on point rear visibility is perfectly fine i can see fine out of my rear view mirror there so definitely not going to have any issues there either but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior you guys got to check out this color of our brand new 2025 kia soul all right so here she is you guys the new 2025 kia soul finished in surf blue with the black roof i love the two-tone color combo here but first thing i want to mention because we do have that new upgraded trim level for 2025 the soul made edition that's what you're looking at right now i think it looks dang good you got 18 inch unique alloy wheels wonderful design there got the two-tone roof like i was saying you got interior and exterior differences wait until you see the interior color that we have with us here it looks absolutely amazing you also get led speaker lights i'm going to show that to you guys later the sound system should be absolutely amazing as well speaking of it's a harman kardon sound system so all of that coming with the soul made edition that we have with us here today so that's pretty freaking exciting let's go ahead and start with where the kia soul is made taking a look at the vin first character is the letter k indicating that the new soul is built and assembled in korea as it should be i love it kdm starting up front though you got that block design on the upper portion of the front grill let me get up a little bit closer here because i actually love the design of this so you got the kia logo kind of situated right in front but then if you continue on you have this cool block design that kind of continues right onto the headlights up here a little bit so I love it. I think that is such a cool design and continues down below there as well. But anyways, front air curtains to the bottom corners. You guys can see that helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination there for a little better aerodynamics. The front grille is going to differ between the trim levels. I probably should have said that as well. So um, for our particular trim, that's what it looks like. I think it looks good. Multi-reflector halogen headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board. However, for the GT line, if you really wanted LEDs, they are optional for the GT line. So you get LED headlights and LED fog lights actually as well with that option. So did want to mention it. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. That pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the sole, rear privacy glass actually does come standard for all trim levels across the board. You got to love that. Got that gloss black A pillar that's going to come standard as well. A little bit of accenting found on the front fender. It continues on to the front doors. I always thought that looked pretty cool as well. Take a look at the side mirrors. They are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated for the GT line and then with integrated turn signals for that GT line trim level as well. And we do have the gloss black side mirror since we have the gloss black roof. I did want to also mention that. But then take a look down at the wheel setup. 16-inch steel wheels with covers for the LX, 16-inch alloys for the S, 18-inch alloys for the GT line, and then 17-inch alloys for the EX. But anywho, that pretty much rounds out the very unique side profile here. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the sole here, all the way to the top, gloss black shark fin antenna, all the way just below that, I guess you could say, center high mount stop lamp, got that rear window wiper, you got the somewhat new Kia badge affixated to the back there, and uh, LED taillights are going to be optional for the GT line, along with the uh, the headlights, like I was just saying, otherwise they're going to be uh, incandescent bulbs back there. Then just below it all, there is a single exhaust outlet, it is tucked away, however, it is going to be mounted in the center with a chrome tip dual chrome tips if you were to go with that gt line that we don't have with us here today so nonetheless i do believe you guys know what we have to do next year as always here is that exhaust clip Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the sole, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate that does come standard for all trim levels across the board. So simply just lift up on the rubberized button in the back and open it up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 24.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 62.1 cubic feet, which is actually a decent amount of space for this thing. And since we're back here, we do have some tie-down anchors back here. There is uh, cargo lighting. The EX trim level that we have today is gonna add to that a cargo cover, a 12-volt power outlet in the corner there, and a dual-level cargo system as well. 
Then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire with actually a decent amount of in-floor storage surrounding it as well. A great place to put an ice scraper or perhaps a tire inflator kit or something like that. So definitely a lot going on for the cargo area, but then making our way up to the rear legroom, that comes in at 38.8 inches, which is decent on paper for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Rear center armrest with cup holders is gonna come on the GT line and EX trim levels. And then there will be dual rear USB charging ports for those rear passengers then as well. But then making our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seats for the LX and the S trim level, premium cloth for the EX, and then a Syntex cloth combination for the GT line, 10-way power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar for the S trim level and up. Heated front seats then is gonna come on the EX trim that we have today. That is gonna be optional though on the GT line. So kind of cool that we got that coming standard though. So anyway, as far as seat comfort goes, I didn't notice anything bad. So in my short little test drive here today, it's been perfectly fine for me. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and heliscoping. It is leather wrapped for the GT line and EX trim levels. And then it's gonna have a flat bottom for that GT line trim level as well but again it's been perfectly fine for me now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your Kia logo on the one side lock and unlock are going to be on the side of the key and then the remote start that's going to be that hold button that is for the S trim level and up just above the Kia logo but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all I'm going to do here is simply put my front of the brake and press that silver engine start button located just to the left of the shifter there. And so once started up, it is a full digital gauge cluster that does come standard for all trim levels across the board. It is slightly customizable. The default color is kind of a purple or violet hue, but then when you change it to sport, it's more of a red hue. So that's kind of cool. Wish there was a little more customization with that, but quite honestly, for this price point, the fact that digital gauges even exist is definitely a good thing. So I actually like the look of it. You got the speedometer all the way to the left, uh, tachometer is on your right. How many miles you have left until you hit empty is all the way to the top. You got your outside temperature, trip A, trip B. And there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel to kind of uh, scroll through all of that stuff as well. So definitely loving the gauges here in the sole but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality here overhead sunglass holder is going to come standard for all trim levels across the board power sunroof for the gt line and ex trim levels however if you go with the soulmate edition you are not going to get that power sunroof we have a sunroof delete unfortunately dual zoom climate control for the s trim level and up wireless phone charger for the s trim level and up as well and of course you have this wonderful speaker lights and so within the infotainment screen I'll get to in a second here. There's a sound mood lamp kind of button. And then if you scroll down, I like to hit music plus because that's gonna kind of light up those speaker lights dependent upon the loudness that is coming through the stereo. That is pretty stinking cool, I love that. But anyways, just in front of the shifter, you got a couple USB charging ports, a 12 volt power outlet, a little bit of rubberized storage. Behind the shifter, you got your dual cup holders within the center armrest. It's actually a decent amount of space in there. It's pretty deep, so more so than I'm used to seeing or more so than I expected in the Kia Soul. But like this cool little texturized silver finish found on the door but I think the mood lamp lighting is really where it's at. I'm a big fan of that. But like I said, now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. Eight inch color touchscreen display is gonna come with the LX, 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display for the S trim level and up. Either way, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, you get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but also you could check out a voice memo system up there where you can record your voice and then play it back at a later date. There's climate control information you can access up there as well. Like I was mentioning to you guys, the uh, sound mood lamp lighting. There's a bunch of different colors or there's kind of that music plus thing where it's gonna glow dependent upon the loudness of the music. That's pretty cool. Factory navigation system actually comes on the S trim level and up. So you guys can see that up there as well. That's pretty sticking cool. Quiet mode, that's a wonderful mode that eliminates the rear speakers and limits them in the front. If you have kids sleeping in the back, that's pretty cool too. They got a lot going to this infotainment system. They did a wonderful job with that. But of course you got the radio information up there as well. So when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. You're going to find six speakers coming standard, but then a 10 speaker Harman Kardon sound system, which is optional on the GT line. It comes standard on the Soulmate. And since we got the Soulmate, that's the one that we have today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Okay. Okay. Do you 
decent amount of base there. Clarity was pretty darn good as well. I kind of expected more from Harding Carden, but I did love the sound mood lamp lighting. So I had the speakers lighting up at the corners there. That was pretty sticking cool. I like that. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put the soul in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, let me start by mentioning the soul is an IIHS top safety pick when equipped with the LED headlights that are optional. I'll put it that way. That's typically how I IHS work so wanted to give that disclaimer front side side curtain airbags do come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian and cyclist detection lane departure warning lane keep assist lane following assist driver attention warning system then as well then if you were to go with the s trim level and up that is going to add to that lane change assist and a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert so Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Soul, very unique styling. That's one of the things I love most about it. You cannot mistake this for any other vehicle out there on the road except for the Kia Soul. So I love that. It's so unique. Very affordable as well. The starting price point is definitely on point. You get America's best warranty, so there's a ton of value added with that. If it were me, I would probably recommend getting the S trim level or higher just because the S is going to add to everything. A wireless phone charger, a larger infotainment screen, alloy wheels, factory navigation system, blind spot monitoring system. So it's really the sweet spot for the Kia Soul. So at minimum, I would say get the S trim level or better. But the only constructive criticism I would say for the Kia Soul is I would love for there to be an all-wheel drive system available because the new Nissan Kicks they just announced is going to come with an optional all-wheel drive system. I would love seeing as this vehicle competes with the Kicks for this one to come with an optional all-wheel drive system as well. So Kia, I think it's time. I think it's time. That would be amazing. But let me know what you guys think of the soul in the comments section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.